best life. 14 years, 44 million records. Our voices are so different, but together in a song, it's just magic. With more consecutive number ones than the Beatles. So the first one goes to number one, and the second one, and the third one. And you start thinking, what well, I want all of them to be number one. And collaborations with some of the greatest names in music. Four ordinary lads from Ireland who will go down in history as one of the most successful groups of all time. It was all meant to be for us. Four guys that, when we stood on a stage, it felt right. But now, it's coming to an end. I was probably the last one to come to terms with it, to go, yeah, is it the right thing? This is Westlife, for the last time. In October, millions of fans were rocked when Westlife announced that after one last tour, 
they were calling it a day. Tonight, we'll get the definitive story of the band's 14 years at the top, together with what made them so successful for so long. It all began with three schoolboys from Sligo on the west coast of Ireland. Shane, Mark and Cian were yet to meet future bandmates Brian and Nicky, but this talented trio had already acquired a taste for the stage. Did you always want music to be your life? We were all into doing the, the musicals, you know, which I suppose at the time like wasn't probably the coolest thing to be doing. We started doing the musicals and we were the T-Birds. He was Kanicki, I was Danny and Mark was a teenager. The guys were creating a stir locally with the local girls in the schools, like a boy band would. It was the first kind of taste of, I suppose, the kind of the madness, you know, the kind of screams. And obviously somebody put two and two together and said, why don't you do some boy band songs at the interval, you know? We wanted more, we wanted more of the screams and more of the, we got such a good reaction, we thought, you know, let's try this, let's try and put a band together. Our whole lives were consumed by the idea of being in this boy band and as we used to say, be the next Backstreet Boys. There was only one man in the whole of Ireland who could make such dreams come true. Legendary band manager, Louis Walsh. You can't really underestimate just how powerful Louis was for you then. There's no doubt about it, if it wasn't for Louis Walsh, we wouldn't be where we are today. It is a fairy tale story, really, because it happened so quick. I got a phone call one day in my office from Shane Farland's mother. She was ringing her for two months and I hadn't a clue. She wouldn't let me off the phone. She said to me, you have to meet my son. We were in Sligo. We were playing in our local town. We were actually playing in, in Tesco car park at the time. I just sensed there was a commitment from them, that they were great friends. There was something different about this band. Then he rang us up about two weeks later and said, you're supporting the Backstreet Boys I next Thursday night. I remember just bursting into tears. I burst into tears. I couldn't believe that something like that could happen to me. I never thought of myself as somebody in a boy band. Um, people in boy bands were more sort of tan with six packs and stuff like that. A month later, you're saying, right, I want to manage you. Louis' first job as manager was to reshape the band, and three were about to become five. What are your memories of meeting Nicky and Brian for the very first time? Nicky was in a like, suit and a tie, and you know, he was real professional looking, <laughs> whereas Brian was in big baggy jeans and like a checkered shirt or whatever. I sang the song Father and Son, and I remember as I was singing, thinking they're not stopping me, and they'd stopped others. And I came off the stage, Louis came over, I'd never met him before, and he went, stay there, stay there, I, I want you in my next pub band, I want you in my next pub band. He was saying pop band, but I thought he was saying pub band. <laughs> And I thought to myself, I don't want to be in a pub band. We could feel the magic straight away. We just clicked. And then all of a sudden it just went bananas from then on in. The band was complete and Simon Cowell was quick to sign. Normally in those situations you try and act a bit cool, but I literally remember he was sitting next to me. 30 seconds in, I said, Louis, we're in. West Side became the iconic West Life and were flown straight to the recording studio. I wanted them in the studio as quickly as possible. We were flying in over London. We just saw Big Ben. We are like, oh, my God. What are we doing here? Like, London, baby. I was in kind of a hurry, really, just to get the first record out. Tomorrow, we're going into the studio with proper microphones, with proper desks, and pro like, what would it be like? And I swear it all over again and I I wanted the public to see what I'd seen as quickly as possible. And I swear it all over again. I'm never gonna say goodbye. At what point did you think we're on to something really special here? Well, I remember the first time we heard our song on the radio, and we were in the back of a van, and Swear It Again came on. We couldn't believe our song was on the radio. It was like literally shh. The five of us just started screaming our heads up. We were like, oh my god, our song is on the radio. There is something different about hearing your song on the radio, even nowadays. And with the first of their 14 number ones in the bag, Westlife were well and truly on the road to superstardom. The world was changing for us. We were doing signings all over Ireland. I remember doing a signing for our first single. It was the first big crowd. We went up on top of the roof and there was like 7,000 people outside. All of a sudden, it's happening and you're going from nothing to number one singles to big concerts to thousands of fans everywhere. It was just the dream start. Still to come, Westlife are let loose on the world. Before Westlife, I'd never been outside the UK. They were like caged monkeys getting set free. And the fans get up close and personal. Pulling bits of hair out of your head. In a way, we loved it because it was like, oh my God, we're so famous. 